But you make the claim on top that you're going to do it 1800x faster. Mm -hmm. And being a data person, I know there's a quantifiable point to that. How did you come out to that claim that is really a powerful claim? We, we ran a number of actual tasks that we wanted, that we would normally have to do as humans. And we, we mm -hmm. clocked it, literally clocked it. So, okay, let's say we want to go and find a stock that recently did a buyback and then calculate what an average buyback price change would be. What do we need to do now? What if, is it the same in 2024 as it was in 2022? So that's another spreadsheet that you're putting together. So all of that is sort of the, the process that you would have to go through to automate something that for us takes a second. Um, and the other part is just reading. Like if you were to read and let's say, I don't know, a hundred press releases, how long would that take you? Physically reading them, looking for events versus the system, which can read 30,000 documents in a minute. If a human wanted to read 30,000 documents, you'd probably be looking closer to six months of time. So I actually think it's, it's probably greater than 1800X, but for the ones that we ran the test and actually filled out the time records, that's what it came out to. Imagine the power to identify investment opportunities 1800 times faster, backed by data to prove it. Andrew Einhorn, CEO of Level Fields AI, wants to level the playing field for retail investors. And later on, we'll level up by going under the hood of how this data-driven AI agent works and then reveal some surprising and obscure AI stocks discovered with this unique algorithm. If you're a seasoned investor or just starting out, stay tuned because the future of AI-driven investing is here and it's more accessible than you might think. Let's begin with the beginning of Level Fields, incubating from the corridors of power, providing intelligence to 100 of the Fortune 500, a $65 billion hedge fund, and even the White House. But remember, this is not financial advice. It's information to help you make decisions based on data and experience. Most people will be content with that kind of success, but Andrew has a different vision. What inspired you to create one of the first AI, AI agents in 2020 for that market going away from what you've been working with? The short version is we were working with these publicly traded companies for a decade almost. <clears throat> and our software was designed to locate events, analyze them, and kind of relay them to the corporate comms folks as fast as possible. Some of the events were positive, some were negative. Many of them moved the share price pretty dramatically. We ended up selling the company. And then as we exited and we you know, took a little bit of break and regrouped and said, well, what can we do better, faster, smarter? And as we're kind of experimenting with developing this new AI, we're trying to figure out what exactly the, the problem that we're going to solve, like identifying exactly the problem and, and what the user interface is going to look like. And then COVID hit and it was like, bam, lights out on the market, <laughs> lights out across the globe. And so we, we looked at it and said, what can we do to benefit society? What can we do to benefit people? And we saw there was a big disconnect between your large asset managers that had 200 analysts that are able to pour through stocks and look at financials and, and look at 10 Qs and 10 Ks and all the filings and find like the great investment opportunities. And for most people, they don't have time to do that. And even if they did, they wouldn't be able to cover 6,000 stocks just on the US exchange. So we saw this gap, this growing gap in capability between an average self-directed investor and these large institutions. And we wanted to, to bridge that gap. And to do that, we needed really effective technology. We needed the AI system that we ultimately built. And what it can do with these AI search agents is it goes out and monitors everything that's happening around these stocks, looking specifically for events proven to move share prices. And when it finds them, it relays them in the form of an alert. So a user doesn't actually have to read all these documents, it doesn't have to search through, doesn't have to do stock screeners. And so it effectively is like an outsourced speed reader that can pour through lots of data and, and read 30,000 documents a minute. And they kind of report back to you like the juicy findings. So that in and of itself was, hence the name, leveling the playing field for the independent mm. investor to now have the same capability as a large asset manager. That's the why behind level fields. Now let's dive into the how. An AI agent is only as good as the data and training. And the scope of data this AI system taps into, it's mind boggling. Reading 30,000 reports in a minute? 
We're talking about a vast network of information sources that would make even the most well-connected hedge fund manager green with envy. But it's not just collecting data. It connects us to thousands of events that move markets. It's looking for patterns, anomalies that human analysts might miss or take weeks to identify. Taking the same techniques used by top tier hedge funds and putting them in the hands of everyday investors. That's what we're talking about, leveling the playing field in a way I've never seen before. Plus the um, inability of people to do, I mean, that's very hard for us to process that level of information, that kind of automation of information mm -hmm. is such a power, because certainly we're not gonna be like, uh, you know, hedge fund analyst or anything like that, but being able to process this down really is the core. Where do you, um, where are the sources of information that you use um, to be able to bring this to people? Are they, you know, obviously company reports are they social media where where what are the sources that you you look at largely it's directly from the companies themselves to the, the reports they put out the press releases they put out in some cases interviews that they've that they've done in a few cases we use third party sources like news outlets but for the most part we get it first party and you know, direct from the company and and that prevents a lot of problems right it prevents some of the opinionizing that tends to happen in news articles or the bias of an article just to focus on one particular detail of the press release and not others that are deemed less less important and when we look at it you have largely the news is driven by the company's releases i would say the news media is kind of like a reseller of information that's widely available already and doing kind of a retail analogy, right? In a retail store, it's called retail because it's selling it to the consumer, but they're buying it from a wholesaler. We can get the information the same, which is like going straight to the manufacturer of the product instead of the wholesaler, which is the news media. So that also increases the speed at which you can get information, eliminate some of the bias, allow you to weed through um, lots of different news and probably save a lot in your news subscription as well if you're savvy about it hey these information sources are stellar they're just fuel for the engine though wait until you hear about the ai agent unlike anything the average investor has been able to take advantage of pinpointing the obscure ai stocks that we'll share just a little bit when most hear ai these days you think of chatbots and large language models but level fields ai doesn't rely on new hallucinating llms making headlines Instead, Andrew's team created a proprietary algorithm crafted over years of experience in high stakes financial analysis. It's like the difference between a generic AI wrapper solution and a finely tuned data analysis machine built for the stock market. Designed from the ground up to do one thing really well, identify investment opportunities with speed and accuracy. Well, this brings us to really the simple, the simple AI agent process, and I'm being generic here, is perception is the input, the action, the decision making. But traditional agents that are being traditional, that are being created in the past few years, are finding that intelligence, that semantic analysis through foundational models like LLMs. You, I don't think, use LLMs. How do you create your algorithm to be able to provide that intelligence and be able to discern? lightly what's you know what's the important information from what's sort of obviously the company shilling we we built our own language model and libraries and ontologies linguistically uh, we have different linguistic algorithms that we employ i think there's several hundred we started the process in 2019 and we built it very focused on finance and in the beginning, we thought oh, maybe we could just get kind of a open source AI tool and train that and save on development. But they were so basic, it just wasn't going to work for our needs because it required so much training. And, and, the, and the stuff that it was doing, the open source bit, was really just kind of you know, it's called token, tokenizing the words, right? Saying this is a noun, this is an adjective, that's a proper noun. And that was a good starting point, but it was pretty elementary. And so rather than rely on that and train someone else's tool, how to do it properly and build on top of it, we just scrapped it and did it from scratch and said, what, 
let's say you had two articles in front of you and you're an AI system. One article is from National Geographic magazine talking about bluebirds right? and what they do and how successful they are. And the other is in a Bloomberg article and it's talking about Bluebird Bio, the biotech company that's a publicly traded stock. How does the AI know that one is a bluebird that flies in the sky and the other is a bluebird bio? And the answer really is the context around it. And so we, we spent more time kind of developing like contextual based cues and algorithms that would, would tell the AI, hey, you're, you're, you're in a finance publication now. We're not talking about animals. And then how do you extract hyperbole out? We wouldn't allow the system to kind of look at some of that type of language, right? It was just looking at straight events. And so our goal was no, no bias, no bull, right? Just look at events. Either it happened or it didn't happen, or it might happen in the future. Again, it has nothing to do with the, the semantics, but the statistics say, yeah, it usually goes up. Stock price goes up. We use that by extracting your real-time data from the exchanges and, and pairing it with the event. So there's a, basically a correlation component to that that shows, hey, this, this win rate, this correlation component, 95% of the time, this event is going to drive up the share price or drive down. Again, there's no opinion on that. It's just what has happened in the past. So does that mean it's going to happen in the future? You can't, you can't set that for sure, but usually it, that the historical way and we have a couple of those scenarios where we call them scenarios, which is just a, a grouping of the same type of event. One event type we have is like a Tesla product launch, right? So does that going to move the share price up or down? I think if you ask somebody, they would assume it's going to move the share price up. Fact of the matter is it's 50, 50. Half the time it goes up, half the time it goes down. We had to build everything from scratch and the system is learning on a regular basis as language is shifting over time. You have to adjust your algorithms and the language that you're looking for. And this includes shorthand social media acronyms that just become common speak right. and being able to put those together. So it's, it's a constant process of improving. Like all AI, the proof is in improving. Time to reveal the AI stocks most miss while chasing the big seven tech stocks that everyone's talking about. Level Fields identifies some surprising players in the AI space, not names you'd expect. An Oregon utility company? A company using AI to develop military drones pushing the boundaries of autonomous flight and decision making in extreme high stakes scenarios? And finally, a name you recognize but not associate with cutting edge AI. And these weren't just companies using AI as a buzzword. They're integrating it into the core of their businesses in ways that could lead to significant long-term value. And this is just a small sample of the insights Level Fields provides every single day. Spotting opportunities in this, obviously, it's all being driven by the big seven. That's <laughs> just NVIDIA and everything. So that's the obvious signals we can get. But I've noticed that there are other stocks that are start being picked up. And how would your system identify outside of the big seven, which everyone's talking about, mm -hmm. some of these companies that people are really crushing it on tied into AI, but not in a way that we would expect. It's a great question. And, and similar way, for example, we got a couple utility companies that came across that were increasing their dividends substantially. And it, it caused us to take a look at one of them, which is a Portland based utility company. <clears throat> I think the ticker is POR. We're like, why is this utility company doing so well when I mean, utilities are not supposed to be doing well in a high interest rate environment? Well, it turns out that the majority of the servers on the West Coast are based in Portland. And this is the utility company that is supplying electricity to those data centers. Earnings call transcript, the CEO is talking about like seeing huge demand from data centers. So I wouldn't have gone and researched that company had that event not first popped up having, and then this is where kind of like, you don't have to have a lot of knowledge, right? The event's showing you something Correct. weird and then you're doing a little investigation and you're like, okay, yeah, it makes sense there. If you pull up a map of all the data centers in the country, like the biggest two areas are Portland and Northern Virginia. Right. And so the utility companies that supply those are, Portland utilities and then Dominion Energy 
on the on the Virginia side, powers all the government servers and all the government contractors. So now you're sort of having these multiple events, putting together the story of like, all right, I see what's going on here. There's the ultimate insiders that know what's going on versus us, the outsiders trying to kind of look at the breadcrumb trails and, and come up with a story, a storyline like a detective, because otherwise you never really know until the, the leadership of the company says so. Picture is worth a thousand words, then I think an event it might be worth 10,000, especially with these generative AI tools. <laughs> And the crazy money now has to somehow figure out how to provide electricity and infrastructure at a level that, I mean, we can barely even do electric cars. Our grids can't support them. And I'm fascinated, but it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with tech. It has to do with infrastructure. Is there other sectors yeah. that come up? I mean, other companies too? Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, the companies come in and you'll see them do different types of events. Uh, sometimes maybe they might be hiring somebody or a return of capital or the creation of a new dividend that didn't exist. These are all kind of indicators that their cash flow situation is looking pretty good. You can invest just on that alone, saying, mm -hmm. well, the company is obviously bullish because if they weren't, they wouldn't be giving cash away. And then you, and you could you could stop there, right? And that would be enough. Or you could say, well, why? Let's poke a little further. Let's look a little bit into the, the reason why these the cash flow is so great. And it doesn't take that long to kind of look at like the last statement from the CEO. And I was like, well, yeah, we're seeing like huge demand for AI data centers. It's so big that we're looking at purchasing nuclear reactors from other energy companies just to supply them. I think it's Constellation. That's a big one in the, in the nuclear space. So yeah, those are, those are pretty big signals. Just like you would, you saw early on the same kind of signals coming out of NVIDIA that things were good. Now you see them coming out of Facebook when they, they turn a corner and all of a sudden they create a new dividend. They're giving away cash because we went from the hurricane is coming, uh, warning that the recession is going to swamp us all to now like, well, this AI boom is going to change society and change technology in a way that we haven't really seen for 120 years since the industrial revolution. Occurred. Do you see those signals coming through, whether it's utilities companies or kind of the other enablers who are selling like databases and things like that, like an Oracle or the ones that are hosting the data centers, like an Amazon and Microsoft, all the way to the ones that are providing the chips and the computer systems that those chips go into Dell, Supermicro computer, the assemblers of those chips, Taiwan semiconductor. The ecosystem around that certainly swells and it won't be too far long where the government starts to look at these tools for cybersecurity, for homeland security, for defense. We see some of it already with some like the drone manufacturers that are AI driven. AVAV is a stock that, that we've tracked quite often and it's, it's a $5 billion drone manufacturer and they made the, the most famous drone in in the, uh, the Ukraine war was the switchblade drone that basically they can almost shoot it like a mortar and then it flies to target and has precision lock on the target. And it's using AI to navigate on its own along the way. And I don't remember the cost of it, but in terms of versus more traditional weaponry where it's like a million dollars every time they shoot a missile from an F-22 or 16 or whatever number, the Raytheon gets a million dollars every time a missile gets shot. These things are far cheaper. They're, they're thousands, not millions. So when we get orders from the defense department for AI drones, they're not going to order 10, they're going to order 20,000, 50,000, ship them off to European allies and NATO. And it just goes on and on. There you have it. A journey that started with 1800 times faster analysis to revealing those obscure AI stocks that most people aren't even aware of. And there's something more powerful than just this AI agent actually human intelligence. Obviously you have the AI agent part, which is uh, about $20 a month. I know you have a yearly cost uh, payment for that, but I noticed, and this is where like, I love it because AI, right, is supposed to replace us all, which is uh, one of the reasons I think adoption is slow because threatening people has never been a great point of getting adoption, but that's personal bias. But I notice you have the 167 a month where you have human intelligence and those listening, you can tell the level of intelligence that's gone in the software and experiences and data is so far beyond 
a lot of people's like reach, but what puts you into actually thinking about having these, your analysts, if that's the correct word, uh, level to bring human intelligence beyond just the automated AI agent kind of level? Well, yeah, we, we actually were asked by a number of, of users. They were subscribers for level one, which is a couple hundred dollars a month. And they said, this, this is great. But if you could just kind of tell me what to buy <laughs> and where to buy and where to sell, that would be even more helpful um, because we have, we have different strategies you can use. We have effectively 5,000 different alerts that people could be subscribing to per year. And for most, they're just looking for like two to three trades a month on average, maybe a little bit more. Um, but they're like, there's a lot here. If I could have somebody just follow the alerts and then cherry pick the ones that are coming through the platform and then tell me kind of the best trade setup. It's like, that's going to save me many, many hours. And I'm willing to pay $167 per month to save myself a few hours and to make a lot more money. It's, it's pretty easy value add. It's like, it's a no brainer. Listen, Andrew, I'm uh, really grateful for you to spend the time and share this. I suggest to people I will include other uh, links to go to Level Fields and check it out. And um, really, thank you so much for joining us. No, thanks for having me. And uh, we do have a, a podcast discount code. If anyone wants to subscribe, it's the word podcast with the number 23 at the end. Uh, and I'll give you a discount if you're interested in subscribing. And if it's not for you, I, I imagine somebody else you could probably refer it to. We appreciate the support.